Air Blues fans, John here with Blues Guitar Institute, and this is your Tuesday Blues lesson number 142. In this lesson, we're going to break apart that ragtime piece that you just heard. It's got some cool things going on, and it's a real snappy piece that you just got to get down. So before we get to that, I want to ask you two quick favors. First, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button, especially if you're digging these free lessons that come out every single Tuesday. And second, if you'd like to check out more about Blues Guitar Institute, be sure to watch till the end of this video and I'll tell you how you can sign up and get some free lessons. So let's dive right in to the instruction on this piece. Okay, the first thing that we want to do is take things slow. So I'm going to play this really slow just so that you can hear the chord changes that are happening and really the melody and sort of get that melody reinforced in your head. Once you have a good grasp of the melody, that's going to help the rest of the song fall in place. So let's take a listen to this piece played slowly. So you can tell that we've got a heavy emphasis on the alternating bass, as with a lot of ragtime blues. And here we're going to start out on the G chord and do a sixth string and then fourth string bass. So we're alternating with the thumb and doing the bass on the sixth string and then the open fourth string. So G, D, G, D. Then you're going to move into this D7 shape here, regular D7, but use your thumb to hook over the top and play the F sharp on the 2nd fret 6th string. Then we're going to do another measure there with a 6-4, six, 6-4. Four, six, four. Then we go back to our G. I'm fretting this G this way with my um, ring finger leading off on the 6th string. It's a great chord shape to get used to over this traditional sort of style of the G chord because you just free up your finger to do a lot more. This index finger here comes in handy um, and uh, you'll see that a lot in the Tuesday Blues lessons. So anyway, so we're back to our G and we're going to go 6-4-6-4 six, four, six, four again. And then in the fourth measure here we're going to introduce the E E7 chord. But the cool thing is we're going to hang out on that G for a half a measure. So we're really splitting the fourth bar between G, 6-4 on the alternating bass, and E on the alternating bass. So it's really cool. Listen to just uh, playing up to that part with the bass line. So you can hear how the chord changes. Really delaying the effect of that E, E7 chord is really kind of, it gives this piece a little something special to me. Here we go. D7. Just a cool way to roll through the chords, especially since we've got this A coming up in the next bar. And our A, we're going to just do this regular A bar chord shape, and we'll add some melody on top when we get there. But for now, just focusing on the bass, and we're going to do 5, 4, 5, 4. Then we go back to our D7 for uh, 6, 4, 6, 4. Then we roll back into this G and the turnaround. And that's a great spot to start thinking about the melody. So once again, the melody sounds like this. Let's just take that passage and start breaking that finger picking down. And before we get into the melody, I want to mention real quick that this bass, you really want to lay into it. So try to get a nice thud on the sixth string and then a nice sort of punchy pop sound. So you're going to want to chip that note out a good bit when you're playing. You really want that boom chick sound. It makes this piece come alive. But with the melody, we're going to lay it right on top of that solid bass foundation. So that's what we've got going on. We've got the bass by itself, then we're going to pinch the fourth and the first string third fret, that G note, then we're going to hit the open 
first string and then plant back on the G. Then we're gonna kind of match that really with a little answer over the D7. Like that. So we're gonna pinch on the first beat of this measure, the outer two strings, both F sharp. Then you'll hit the first fret on the second string, that C note. That gives it the nice D7 flare. Down on the bass. Then hit that open first string and then back down on the F sharp. Same picking over the G. But remember we have this delayed effect, this delayed chord change. So we're going to remain on this G for the fourth measure, at least the first half of it. And we're gonna do similar to this D7. We just kind of roll down through the chord tones. We're gonna to do that over the G. And over G, that looks like this. We're pinching the outer two strings then second string and then down on our bass four string. Then we hit the open first string and then the open sixth string. So now we're switching to the E chord and really we're going to play it down and play an E7. We've got very similar picking there, but it's really cool that we've got this split measure. Then we move into the A chord, and we're going to play between this long A and this A7. The long A is basically the bar chord A, but with this A note on top, the fifth fret of the first string. And then the A7, we drop down a step and hit the G note on the first string. So here's what we've got. So we start out pinching the uh, fifth string bass along with the second string, second fret, and that number, uh, that uh, note is held under the bar. Then we're doing another pinch, this time reaching out to that A on top. down and playing that seventh note there, the G. So we've got this. And we do come back to this um, A on top. Same D7 as we've had in a previous bar. And then we enter the turnaround and it sounds like this. That's the first little part of it before we go into the D7 chord. So you're really just hitting the sixth string um, on the third fret, and then the same, really this G note on the third fret of the first string. And then moving down, this is a real cool note. That's the flat seven when you're thinking about a G chord. So this note here, this F on the fourth string third fret, we're gonna walk down and really open and fall right into our D7 chord. And just do some picking there. So here's what we have when we throw all of this together.
let's play this up to speed. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you really enjoyed it. A couple of final thoughts. Really focus on getting that punchy, tight bass line and then that nice, clean melody played right on top. Pay a lot of attention to the techniques and the actual technical things that are going on with your thumb and your forefingers when you're picking on this one. It really makes this thing bounce when you can get it down. If you want to really hear the master do this, check out almost anything by Blind Blake. Now, I've told you at the beginning of this video that you could check out some free lessons from Blues Guitar Institute, and you can do that by going to the website and then clicking on the Acoustic Blues Jumpstart. This is a premium course, but I do offer the first three lessons in the course absolutely free. It's a way to get you to just check out what we've got going on in the premium membership. So sign up for the Acoustic Blues Jumpstart and get started taking your blues to the next level. 